welcome to a different kind of episode today on the virtual shelling network. We're here at the east end on Sanibel. You can see Lighthouse is right down here on the point, not too far from the end of the island. It is a beautiful day, nice calm water going on. It is just a beautiful, beautiful day. Lots of birds up here. I don't know if you'll be able to see them circling around in the nice blue sky. We've got a slight breeze. Um, it is just gorgeous out here and we're gonna be doing a different type of virtual shelling today um, for all of you viewing wherever you are this has been a requested video and instead of virtual shelling um, well you're gonna be shelling on the beach but instead of virtual shelling finding shells out there in the water you guys are gonna be virtual shelling some shells in our private collection and I'm gonna be doing a little um, seashell identification educational video for you guys today so I brought with me some amazing beach treasures today and what I'm gonna be doing is going through some of the common shells and not so common shells that you guys um, may find out here on the beach and in and around southwest Florida and uh, it's very important to know not only um, what you're looking for but what you have when you find it so let's get shelling Okay guys, as I start to kind of lay out some of these really amazing shells that we have that I'm gonna be showing you guys, um, this has been a requested video for quite some time um, that I've had a couple people ask if I would be um, willing to do kind of a video on shells in our private collection. And not only do I wanna do a video on some fun shells that we've found over the years that have been really amazing to find. Um, but I also wanted to do a video because guys, it's really important that, you know, if you're going to take, this is why tours are so important. If you're going to take a tour, a fossil hunting tour, or, um, let's just say you're going to do, um, a shell tour, a fossil hunting tour. If you're going to do a fishing charter, let's just say that you're from up North and you know, you've never, really gone fishing before right and you've got to know where to go you've got to know what what to do and if you just go to the store and you buy a fishing pole and you go to the beach and you throw your line in with a worm on it you might not catch anything because you don't really know what you're doing right so you got to know like where to go and and maybe somebody is going to say oh you go to this area and here's a tide chart right and even if you know how to read the tide chart maybe you're going to say, well, wait a minute, like, do I, do I fish at high tide or do I fish at low tide or do I fish when the tide is going in or do I fish when the tide is coming out or is it better in the morning or is it better in the evening? Or, you know, if it's raining, is that okay? Like, you, you know, it's really hard sometimes to know exactly um, what, what to do and where to go. And let's just say you catch a fish. Let's just say you get lucky and you catch a fish. You got to know what it is, right? Is this a fish that I can eat? Is this a fish that isn't good for eating? And if it is a good fish for eating, like let's just say you caught a snook, is it season? Am I allowed to keep it? Is it big enough to keep? So with shelling, um, it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's almost the exact same thing with shelling. Um, is that we want to know, you know, where do we go to look for shells? What's the best beach? What's the best time when we get to the beach? Where do we look? When we find a shell, how do we know if if it's a good shell? Um, do, can we keep it? How do we know if it's alive? How do we know if it's occupied? How do we know if it's okay to take home? And if we can take it home, how do we know if it's um, a genonia versus an alphabet cone? How, how do we know if it's even a cool shell to find? So I want to kind of go over these. So when you're virtual shelling with me, because let me tell you, there's many times when I just the other night I was editing the video um, for one of the episodes on our TV. I had it on the big screen opposed to my um, computer, my laptop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't see that shark eye, right? And I'm sure you guys have noticed like, you know, shells that I miss. And that's part of the fun of virtual shelling. You guys are shelling too. And so when you come down on vacation or even when you're virtual shelling um, on the virtual shelling network on virtual shelling episodes, I want you guys to be able to recognize shells and know what they are. And when you find them, you'll know if you found something, you know, all shells are really cool, 
but you'll be able to know what you found and, and if it's rare or if it's common or what you can do with it or if it's a really cool variety of a shell. So I'm gonna start out um, with just some common shells that you may find. I'm gonna start out with kind of bivalves to begin with. Now the one shell that I did not bring with me and I meant to make a note and I did not bring any coquinas with me. And this is by no means encompassing every single shell you can find on the beach, guys. This is just kind of a few shells that I grabbed that I think are common, some that are sought after. Um, this is by no means a, a, you know, a complete um, guide to shell identification down here. So there's gonna be some shells that I'm not showing you that you can find. There's gonna be shells that um, you've seen in videos that I've mentioned that I'm not showing here. So don't think that this is a full list of shells, but this is just some um, to give you an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by showing you guys some bivalves. Um, one of the most common here I'm gonna show you are kitten paws. So kitten paws are super fun. You guys have heard me talk about kitten paws before. Um, they're not a very large shell. They do come in different sizes. Um, I don't think I've really found any larger than a quarter. So this one here is probably about um, the most large average sized kitten paw that you'll find. But they're usually usually um, orange and white. So you'll find them in different shades of orange. Here's kind of a, a deeper reddish orange shade. Um, this one over here, right here is a little bit lighter. This one kind of has more of like a, you know, this might be more of a back, a back foot, <laughs> back, a hind, a hind paw um, to the cat. Um, we've got some that, you know, are, this looks more like it might be like a long haired cat, you know, with all the kind of fur, if you guys can see that. Um, We've got some that have, you know, kind of fat toes here, and we've got some that are kind of the Hemingway with, if you guys have the Hemingway um, cats with the multiple toes. So they're really fun because um, they're all really different. And we've even had some that we find that are still intact. So you can see that this one is still uh, together, which is um, kind of unique and cool. So kitten paws are really fun. Um, if you go to the beach and you're like, we, I really can't find a whole lot of shells. Coquinas and kitten paws are two of my favorite craft shells. You can do anything with them. Coquinas are the really colorful shells. We call them the butterfly shells. You can literally, um, they're great for kids crafting. You can glue them on a picture frame and make a butterfly picture frame. It's super simple. Kitten paws are the same way. You can make kitten paw Christmas trees, kitten paw picture frames. Um, mirrors, ornaments. If you have a cat crazy friend and you need a gift for them, make them a kitten paw picture frame for their cat. So it's really fun. They're really great to craft with. They're very, very abundant. So like I was saying in a couple of my uh, videos, if you've been watching the Virtual Shelling Network for a while, I talk about kitten paws. When you do a craft project, such as a Christmas tree, a little, you know, when you take the styrofoam um, Christmas tree forms and you glue around, uh, you need a lot of shells. You would be surprised at how many shells you need. So this is a great type of shell to find because you can find a lot of them for your project. Okay, so next up we have jingle shells. I only have two of them to show you guys. Um, I was looking for some more, but I've shipped out most of the ones that I have in the subscription shell boxes. So if you're a Beach Treasure Box subscriber, you've probably gotten some jingle shells in your boxes. Um, jingle shells are super fun. They come in different colors. They come in black, gray, or silver, um, white, they come in orange and yellow and different shades too. So you can see there's like a lighter orange one here and then a darker orange one over here. And they come in different sizes too. They're kind of a metallic iridescent. Um, they have kind of like a metallic texture to them and they're really fun. So these also make great craft shells. They're really abundant. They also make awesome fish scales. So if you are crafting a fish or a mermaid and you need um, scales for the tail, these make such a great shell for that project. So these are um, a great abundant shell that you are going to find on the beach. Let's talk about cockles. Okay, giant heart cockles. You guys know I am obsessed with giant heart cockles. They come in all sizes. They come even a little bit bigger than this. So if you can see, this is like almost the size of my hand. Um, and this is about as big as they get. I found a couple that are slightly larger and they are bivalves. And if they are together, I don't have one intact to show you, but they do make kind of a heart shaped when they are intact. Um, so let me just show you really quick they would kind of make a heart shape like that. 
and that would be like half of the heart if you can kind of see that so they're really fun to collect here's a couple um, smaller ones this one's kind of lighter this one's a little bit darker this one has a really cool pattern I absolutely love collecting cockle shells they also make really good display shells so not only are they fun to craft with and make ornaments but you can also take some of your minis and tinies and you automatically have a cute little display bowl for your shells another species of cockle shell that i love to find are the yellow cockles they don't get as big this is about as big as they're gonna get they do have a little bit of a pattern and they are yellow in color but usually when you flip them over they're really yellow and they've got a really bright yellow edge here they're just really fun to find and again they're super pretty so if you're looking for just a fun accent um, shell for your shell bowl or again a little display bowl these are really great also one of my husband's favorite shells and one of mine, um, one of my favorite to find too, are the rose petal talons. Now we do not find a lot of these here on Sanibel, but we do find them in the Bonita Springs area and down in the 10,000 Islands. They are so pretty. They are pink and they come in um, shades from light pink ranging from light pink to like a darker pink. Um, they kind of look like coquinas, but they're shaped just, oops, just a little bit differently and they are a little bit larger. Uh, rose petal talons, they are just super, super pretty. And then let me grab, while I'm talking about talons, we've got the alternate talons as well. So these look like just monster-sized coquinas, and they are more of just a white color, and then they've got the ridges on there. So we've got the alternate talons and then the rose petal talons. So these also make fun craft projects too. These are um, obviously not, not a pair, um, but, but if you get a pair of them, you can put them together. They make really fun, um, you know, butterfly, um, you know, if you're, if you're making a little, you know, butterfly typed um, design on canvas or a picture frame or whatnot, they, they make cute little butterfly designs. I don't find a lot of them intact, um, so sometimes you just have to, you know, get a bunch of them and just match up sizes, but the talons are so pretty and these rose petal talons are just so pretty in a bowl and you can also make really pretty flowers out of them too. They make really pretty flower petals if you're a crafter. Speaking of crafting with flowers, one of my favorite shells to pick up, and I keep saying this, I know I say like one of my favorite shells. I have a lot of favorite shells to pick up, guys. You guys know that. I'm a sheller. That's why I do what I do, right? Um, buttercups. I love buttercups. So they don't look like a whole lot from this side. They just look like kind of a, I don't know, just an average clam. But on the other side, oh my gosh, they have the most beautiful yellow. And they all um, kind of vary on the saturation of yellow. Some of them will be really yellow in here and some of them will be rather pale. This one's got a gorgeous, vibrant um, yellow kind of um, edge on it. But these make awesome shells to craft with as well. So you kind of put them around like this um, to make a flower. And they even come, um, sometimes the little baby ones will still be intact like this and then you can have your little flower center if you can just picture that all the way around. Um, so I love picking up buttercups. They're just so pretty and so fun to craft with. And again, I use these a lot too to, as a little like mini and tiny display because especially these, um, you'll get, uh, you know, the nice, the nice yellow rim around it. So it makes like a nice pretty little frame for your little bowl. All right, this next shell is a super popular crafting shell. Um, it is called a docinia. It is a clam. It is very round, very flat and white, and it makes a perfect canvas for painting. So if you were in the Sanibel Shells group or you love to paint shells or ornaments, this is such a great shell to use for painting. It's super flat, it's white, and it's just a perfect canvas for painting shells. Um, here's one that is a bivalve. So just so you guys know, when I say bivalve, I mean shells that are together. They have two halves um, to be alive. So the animal lives between the two shells. And so when you find a bivalve, um, a half of a bivalve, you know that it's no longer alive because it's only half of the shell. Um, also, 
this little shell here has a hole in it. And anytime you find a shell with a perfect hole in it like this, that's because another shell, usually a drill, there's lots of species of drill shells, drilled a hole in it and ate the animal. Okay, so this shell got eaten by another shell and that perfect little hole was drilled by a shell, which is kind of cool. So these are another super popular um, shell to find on the beach. A lot of times you will find them intact like this. And just a quick note, any of the bivalves that I just um, showed you guys, if you do find them intact, which means they're together, there's a little hinge ligament right here that holds them together. This hinge ligament is very fragile. So once they dry, if you can see that this shell's it's still held together, but it's dry. So if I were to force this shell open, that ligament would crack. Or if I were to force this all the way closed, that ligament would crack. So you need to lay your shell out however you want it to dry. If you want it to dry closed, leave it closed. If you want it to dry all the way flat and open like a coquina, like a butterfly, lay it open. Also, if you bleach this, you need to bleach it very diluted and very quickly. I'm talking like maybe 20% bleach for 10 minutes, that's it, because the bleach will disintegrate this ligament here. I only bleach the shells if they're found during red tide or they're really, really, really stinky. Otherwise, just a little bit of soap and water is enough to wash these off. And then, like I said, lay them out however you want them to dry. Um, otherwise, they will break apart. If they do, you can always just glue them back together. It's not a big deal but I just want you to be aware that they will stay however they dry. Another bivalve that is a favorite is going to be the calico clam. I've also sent out a ton of these um, in beach treasure boxes. I know that this is a favorite for a lot of you. They have relatively the same pattern, kind of the calico pattern, which is why they get their name. Um, they get a little bit bigger than this, but not too much. And, and you know, some of them are more solid colored. Some of them have more pattern than others. Some of them are light, some of them are dark, but they're just also a really fun shell to collect and find. Here is another fan favorite. I didn't bring a bunch of them, but I did want to bring one um, just because it is a shell that is just really popular. And this is the Sunray Venus clam or the Venus Sunray, some, some people call it. Um, they're so fun. They do come in a variety of shades. Um, they can be dark, they can be light colored. They get pretty large. I'm just gonna steal this angel wing for a minute. They, they get probably the size of this angel wing. They get very, very large in size and they are so fun. I just love them. They're fun to craft with, they're fun to paint, um, they're fun to just have. I will tell you though, they do bleach very easily. So I do not bleach my um, Sunray Venus clams unless it is red tide and they're very, very stinky. Again, I will bleach them in like, you know, 10 to 20% bleach for maybe 10 minutes, just enough to kill the bacteria that might be on them. Otherwise, soap and water will do the trick. And a little toothbrush, if it's got any little um, uh, periostricum right here, this one hasn't been really um, cleaned that well yet, or just leave it alone if you're worried about bleaching it out. But these are such a fun um, shell. I do include these in the subscription shell boxes, and I know that they are requested often. So I know you guys are um, big fans of the Sunray Venus. One of my other favorite shells, and I, I say this because I get so excited when I find them, but I hardly ever find them. Um, they're called bittersweets. So um, unfortunately, they're just not super common um, around here. I think they're more common on the other coast of Florida, um, but they're super pretty. They're really fun. They've got kind of a ridge. I don't know if you'll be able to see around the outside there. And then on the other side, some of them are solid colored. They can be just a solid brown. A lot of the time they'll have a really beautiful pattern um, and they can get rather uh, large, like the size of a quarter as well. So these are just super fun. I get so excited when I find these little gems. And one of the things I love is finding those with those really pretty vibrant patterns. So when I find one with a really fun pattern, I get super excited. So these are one of my favorites too. A lot of you love jewelry boxes. So here is a spiny jewelry box. I will tell you that not all of them have spines like this. So these are some from our private collection. And when I say private collection, these are um, shells that, you know, of all the shells we find, some of them 
make it into our collection that they don't get sold and they don't get given away um, and they don't get put in boxes they get put out on display in our home um, or kept nice and safe so you know some of these have just they're beautiful examples I should say of the specimen of the shell so this one for example has really nice spines and then sometimes when you flip them over they've got this vibrant purple underneath here is one that is still intact so this one was found together and we don't find them together very often this one actually has and hopefully the camera will pick it up it has a really pretty um peachy peachy pink almost like a sunset pattern right there um, towards the tip there and then inside it doesn't really have I'm not going to open it all the way because I don't want to break it apart but it doesn't really have any color um, oops actually I might break it apart anyway um, it doesn't really have a lot of color there on the inside as you can see but on the outside it is um, it just has great spines there on the outside and we always love collecting um, intact bivalves and then one more to show you guys check out this one so this one not only has awesome color underneath but check out the spine on that baby so this is what I'm talking about like when you find a shell that's just an exceptional example of the shell that's what I love this is another reason why you should wear beach shoes by the way because if you step on this baby ooh, that's gonna hurt so look how look how fun so yeah this is a super common shell you can find spiny jewelry boxes all day long but your goal should be to find a really nice example of one so don't get discouraged you know when you're shelling if you're not finding all these rare shells go go find a rare example of a really common shell okay so speaking of really rare examples of really common shells one of the most common shells there possibly is on Sanibel Island is the calico scallop. And they come in every single color and pattern and shade imaginable, except for blue and green, which I think is really interesting. I'm not a marine biologist, but I do think it's really funny that water is blue and green and seashells, you would think that they would be blue and green, right? To blend in with their environment, but they're pretty much every other color except blue and green. However, um, calico scallops come in so many different colors and shades and patterns, and they're just beautiful. And they come in all sizes. This is probably the largest size that you're gonna find in a calico scallop, um, but they come in pinks and orange oranges and yellows and peaches and white and white with the maroon and all kinds of colors. They also um, come in kind of a sunburst pattern like this where you'll have some pink or some maroon and then you have these vibrant orange streaks if you can see. Super pretty. And then we also have oranges and I love the orange scallops, you guys. Like, I am so obsessed with orange scallops. I just love them. Look how pretty. Look at this one. Look how pretty this one is. I just got sand all over it. So pretty. Hopefully the camera is, like, coming in with good color because it is really bright out here. So here's some examples of your calico scallops. So, again, these are probably the largest you're going to find in the calicos. Bright one. Pretty orange scallop there. So the other type of scallop that you're going to find is called a rough scallop and this is what it looks like and it literally is rough so it's got like a rough texture to it. These are very smooth. They have ridges but they're smooth. These have ridges also but it's actually rough. Can you guys hear it? Whereas like here. Can you guys hear it's really smooth in this one? It's really rough. So it's called a rough scallop. But they're so fun. And the, one of the reasons you can tell it's a rough scallop is it's a little bit more oblong shape here. So you can see the calico scallop here um, on the right hand side is a little bit more round. And the wings here on the bottom are symmetrical. So they're the same on the bottom where the wings over here on the rough scallop, the wing on the right-hand side is shorter than the wing on the left-hand side. Here is another example of a rough scallop too. One of the shells that I don't have here today is a lion's paw. It's on my bucket list. I've just never found one. I know people people tend to find them a lot. They're really common on the other coast, but they're very, very rare to find here um, on our west coast. They look similar to a rough scallop, but they're larger. And these ridges here are much thicker 
and the ridges have ridges. So I'll post a picture so you guys will be able to see what a lion's paw looks like. I've only found little tiny fragments and the fragments are so small you wouldn't be able to identify really what it was anyway. Um, but that is definitely a shell that is on my bucket list. Oh, I wanted to show you guys really quick, um, speaking of the rough scallop, so this is one of the most sought after shells for my husband and I, is the yellow rough scallop. So we found a piece, I shouldn't say we, it was my husband, he found a piece. Um, I found a piece too, but my piece is like that big, it like doesn't even count. But we are on the hunt, and it's not that they're impossible to find, I mean people find them, I mean people find them like, you know, at least probably like a couple times a month, but we have not found a whole yellow scallop yet, so this is our um our little prized possession thus far so that is another bucket list shell for us along with a lion's paw so um if you are a scallop lover make sure you put this on your list all right so we have one more shell on our bivalve list today for today and this is going to be um you guys know this is probably like my favorite shell ever is the flat scallop i love flat scallops they are so hard to find whole because they are so extremely fragile and they are a scallop they are literally just Flat. So I call them flat Stanleys. If you have kids, you probably know who flat Stanley is. You cut flat Stanley out. He travels around the world. Um, so every time I find one, I call him flat Stanley. But this is um, a flat scallop. I love them. They're also called zigzag scallops. They have sometimes a really cool pattern. They come in different colors. Um, they're just so fun and I one of the reasons I love them so much is I think they're so unique but they're also really hard to find whole so when I find one whole I get super excited I'm also one of those people where I can't not pick up a fragment I mean I could literally have a piece like that big and I'll pick it up because like it's still a flat scallop and I have to put it in my little fragments flat scallop jar so I love flat scallops I'm going to show you um, a couple pieces that we found that I am in love with so this bright orange one I was so sad that it was broken but hopefully you guys can see the color on this it is absolutely gorgeous almost whole so pretty and then this one is just so dark and it's got a little bit of a maroon pattern hopefully you guys will be able to see that on camera and there's the back side and one thing that I never knew as a sheller that I found out a couple years ago is that flat scallops are not flat on both halves so some of you may know that some of you may not um all of these shells that i'm showing you today we found there's only one shell in this whole group um that we purchased and it is this one because i wanted to use this as an educational um, piece so this is a whole flat scallop and you'll see the one side. Now, if you guys remember me telling you, and I should have brought um, an example, but if you guys remember me telling you about um, calico scallops, how a lot of times one side will be light and kind of not colorful, and the other side will be extremely colorful, it's kind of the same thing where one side will be colorful and the other side won't be as colorful. However, the other side is actually like a scallop. Do you guys see that? So the one side is flat. It's a flat scallop. So this is the side that we all want to find. And then the other side is literally like just a scallop. So you've probably found the other half of a flat scallop before. You just didn't know that it wasn't just a regular scallop. You probably didn't know that it was the other half of a flat scallop. So I'm one of the ones who has to go through my scallop collection and look because I'm pretty sure that I have some scallops that I just assumed were whatever species of scallop. Um, and I think I brought another one that we purchased too. I thought, let me see if I can, oh yeah, here it is. So here's another one that we purchased. So we purchased both of these shells from a shell store so I could just use them as educational pieces okay so here is the one side and then look at this I mean I'm I'm sure you guys have probably picked up scallops like this thinking that it was just a weird calico scallop 
not realizing that it was actually a flat scallop, but it just wasn't flat. So pretty cool, right? Okay, we're gonna move on to some other common shells that we can find on the beach that I think are some fun shells that you guys can always look for. Um, one of them is gonna be slipper shells or Indian boats. So I grew up calling them Indian boats. I used to float them um, in the little tide pools just like this. I used to just sit there all day and like float the little Indian boats, but some people call them slipper shells. So you would like, you know, you would slip your little feet in there like that and wear them as slippers. Um, they come in different sizes. They don't really get a whole lot bigger than this. Um, and they kind of suction on to anything really, other shells, each other, um, driftwood, um, anything. Some of you guys have seen that in some of the videos if you've seen them alive. And look how fun. So some of them have like speckled patterns like this on them this one has a, like a speckled pattern too this one has stripes so that's really cool and then some of them are just solid colored so there's kind of a variety of slipper shells or indian boats so i i think they're really fun to collect um other shells that are very common are augers so these are some really big augers. I love finding giant augers. So this one right here is probably one of the biggest that I found. Um, these make great snowman noses. So paint them orange, stick them on your um, sand dollar or sea urchin snowmen. Um, these are really fun um, to just use as fillers, um, either for shell mirrors or you can do um, little spike ball ornaments with them. They are in close relation to the serifs. So these are serifs. They look very similar. They are a little bit different. They come in light colors like this one. Here's a really pretty dark one here. I love the dark serifs. I find the dark ones like this are a little more uncommon um, than the light ones, but these are also um, pretty as well. So those are just a couple examples of more common shells that we find. The other common shells that are super common are going to be your conchs, right? So we always have conch shells that we find, little juvenile fighting conchs in all sizes. We find minis, we find tinies. These are just some examples of juvenile conchs that I have found um, that I just grabbed. So this is kind of a smaller one here. This one has some really cool spikes. If you can see right here, this one kind of has a couple little spikes here too. These don't really have that many spikes um, on them. And this one's more of a light color. This one's more of a dark color. This one has a really cool pattern on it. So it kind of just all depends on, you know, what, what, what the shell is. All of these shells have such cool personalities, which is what I really love about shelling. And um, I didn't bring a bunch of the large um, fighting conks, but this is what they look like as adults. That's gonna be the adult size. This one I brought because it's just so pretty. It's got kind of like a orangish, peachish color to it. And it's just super pretty. I don't know, I just love it. I love the different, the different colored specimens. So fighting conks are another just super fun shell to find. All different colors, all different sizes, all different patterns. Um, and you can pretty much be guaranteed you're going to find some type of fighting conch when you come to Sandbell here. Another shell that is pretty common um, is the turbo or turban shell. Either one is correct. I grew up calling them turbo shells. Um, they are different sizes, but this is probably the largest of this species here that we find. There are a lot of species. You'll also find them um, in souvenir shops as like t-shirt ties. You'll find the really large ones. They're usually green and they're cut in half, so you can put a t-shirt through them. But this is the species that's found here. And one thing I really like about them is they do have unique colors and patterns. We found some that are orange. This one's kind of like a, an orange tan with a really pretty tip on it and then I brought this one to show you too it is broken but check out the cool pattern hopefully you guys can see it. it's got this like white stripey pattern on it that's so cool so again I'm the type of person where even if all I'm finding that day are common shells I'm gonna try to find that rare 
version of the common shell. So I wish this one wouldn't be broken because that would have been like a really cool, cool specimen. All right, who doesn't love olives? I love picking up olives. There's something about a shiny olive with a beautiful point on it that I just can't resist. Um, I don't know, these are lettered olives, so it's it's because it's supposedly it looks like they have lettering. I don't know in what language, but they say that there's letters on the olives, so I'm not really sure. The lettered olives are the species of olive, olives that you will find over here. Um, every once in a while, somebody will find a different species of olive, but nine times out of 10, that's the species of olive that you're gonna find. They're just so shiny and they're so fun. These are the normal colors of olives that you're gonna find. So there's really dark ones. There's some really light ones here. Um, this one's kind of like a kind of a stockier, um, thicker olive with kind of not so much of a point. So sometimes you'll find ones that are a little bit odder in shape. This is probably one of the largest olives that I've found. It's not as um, vibrant in coloration, but it is great big in size. You guys can kind of see the size difference. And then I wanted to show you guys too, um, this one right here that doesn't look like it has a lot of color to it. I've seen a lot of people find this is just a really light colored olive and they think this is a golden olive because you know compared to let's say this one it definitely looks like it could be you know different right but let me tell you a golden olive is golden and I'm going to show you one I found um I found a couple of them but this is one that I brought to show you guys this is a golden olive so you will know when you find one, it is golden, it is glowing. Um, this one is just a light colored olive similar to this one here. Okay, so this will give you guys an idea of the three. The golden one obviously is in the middle and it is golden. They're such a gem to find. I get so excited when I find a golden olive. All right, these little guys I love to find. They are more popular down in the 10,000 Islands in the Marco area than they are here on Sanibel, um, but they are tops. And they are actually uh, a different species of tops, but they are very similar. This is kind of the normal top that we find. It's a light tan color. And then this one here is a Gulf Stream top. So it's a little bit darker. It's almost kind of a reddish color. There we go. So you guys can kind of see the difference in um, coloration there. It's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit darker, but these tops are so fun. This used to be one of my favorite shells as a child um, to collect. And they don't get very big. This is about as big as, as they come. Um, so you will find them small, like this little mini here. And um, they are super fun. Okay, here's another fan favorite. I know you guys love the worm shells and they're just not a shell that I find super often. So when I do, I get really excited. Um, they're just a shell that contains a worm and they're in all different, um, they're usually the same color. They're just shades of tan. So they're not really exciting there, but they come in all different, you know, shapes and squigglies and sizes and they're just so fun they're just so fun they're fun to craft with they're fun to put in a bowl um, or a jar or something i don't know this is like a super long one um with sometimes you'll get the the end or like the little the little point here um on it um let me see if i can focus it on that it's like super super pointy right there and i know you guys love these so much so i do try to include them in um beach treasure boxes when I find them. We just don't find too many and I do try to keep some of them in our private collection because I too love these so, so much. Alrighty, I know you guys are patiently waiting. We're getting to the good stuff now. Um, so let's chat really quick about alphabet cones. Everybody loves to find an alphabet cone. They are so fun, um, a variety of sizes, a variety of shades of orange. So this is what they look like. We find um, little bitty, little um, juvenile alphabet cones just like this. And then we find them all the way up to, this is one of the largest ones that we found a couple inches big. Um, they are said to have all the letters of the alphabet. Again, I'm not sure which language, um, but depending on which kind of alphabet cone you find, I need to clean this one up a little bit. I grabbed it before I left because it does have a really cool um, pattern to it with all of the blurred 
alphabet uh, letters on there. This one is really light colored orange. This one's really dark. Sometimes we'll find them in a two-tone where half of it will be light and half of it will be dark. I absolutely love finding alphabet cones. So no matter what, even if it's not, you know, you guys know my husband and I have the ugly alphabet cone contest. Even if it's not a perfect alphabet cone, I commend you for finding one because they are just so fun to find. Not to be confused with the Florida cone. Okay, so Florida cones are equally as fun to find, but not quite as uncommon. So these are the Florida cones. They also come in a variety of shades. So they are orange and yellow. And just depending on the shell will depend on the vibrancy of the shade that they are. So sometimes they are a little bit more orange. Sometimes they are a little bit more yellow. They are still super fun to find nonetheless. And I did bring one mini shell for you guys because I did want to show you the difference between the alphabet cones, the Florida cones, and the dusky cone because I know sometimes people find the dusky cones and they aren't sure what species of cone it is. It kind of looks like an alphabet cone because it does have a little bit of that speckled pattern, but it's more of the shape. Um, you can see that it has more of that um, steep tip and point there of the Florida cone. If you can see the Florida cone has more of that steep point there, um, which is very, very similar, but this is called a dusky cone and it is a species all in its own and it doesn't get much bigger than this. So they are much smaller. Um, they do have a little bit of a, um, if you can see right here, it has a little bit of a textured um, ridge on the side and then it does usually have a little bit of a pattern.